think I bought somebody's quilting stash. I went to one of my favorite thrift stores the other day and all of a sudden they had a mountain of fabric and not just any fabric, vintage calico, which is, if you have ever watched this channel before, you might already know that it's like one of my favorite things ever is calico prints from the 70s and 80s. And so I couldn't help myself. I bought entirely too much fabric. This isn't all of it though. I did in fact leave some at the store, but there is a lot here. So, um, I'm just kind of in love. Like, it's just, I love it. So I thought today, instead of stitching something, I would work on my other favorite hobby, hoarding craft supplies. So my plan is to open up all these bundles and sort through all this fabric. And as I sort through this, I'm gonna try and point out some of the aspects that I look for when I try and date some of these fabrics. Now, I don't have any hard and fast rules or indicators other than like some brands if, if they're on the selvage and stuff like that. I, I do go a lot by vibes as to how old some of these things are. And sometimes I get it wrong. But I think as I go through these, some of them I do believe have selvages with their, their brand names and possibly even dates. And so you may also be able to get a good indication of how to judge the age of some of this fabric. And in honor of the vintage calico that lies herein, I am wearing my adorable vintage calico apron that I thrifted, not made by me. So as I sort through this fabric, there are a couple of categories that I'm going to place them in. The first being my precious. So there's gonna be some calico in here that is just, that I'm gonna like too precious, too lovely, that I'm gonna wanna make sure that I use for an appropriate project. So my favorites are going to go into one pile and those will not be touched, at least for the time being. I also had mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to start, um, English paper piecing. And I had a few bits of fabric that I had picked out to do that with, but none of it was enough to make an entire piece. So I'm also going to make a pile of fabrics that I think would be suitable for English paper piecing. And then after that, I will probably sort by color, by size, um, and make a couple of different like groups descending in order of you know, how much I like it, how much of it there is, how big the pieces are. Uh, we'll see. I don't know all of what's in here. I do know there are some, like I've been able to like flip through a little, but they're kind of taped. So I haven't seen everything in here. And there was a lot of pink and red. Um, I did get one yellow. There was more yellow, but I only grabbed one. Did I only grab one? And there's a few solids in here. Now, most of these bundles were a dollar or a dollar 99. So, you know, it it looks like a lot, but it's it's a lot of fabric. Let's dig into some vintage fabric. First, let me just open them up and sort them out. So these are individual pieces that we will look at momentarily. Spoilers. Now let's open up some of these bundles. So <laughs> I don't know where to put them. Oh, I did get another yellow one. There's the cat. Hi, cat. Are you going to entertain people while I'm opening these bundles and out of frame? Yeah. What you going to do? You're going to sit there. That's good. Okay. You do that. I did realize that, um, most of my fabric is thrifted in my stash because I, oh, that's flannel. I need to be gentle. Um, and so I tend, pardon the noise, I tend not to buy a lot of solid colors because, you know, I can resist that. I can, I don't need a vintage solid color. It's the vintage prints that I can't really get nowadays. So I always just figure I'll get the colors when I need them, but then I never know what I need. And then I'm trying to just work from stash and I never have solid colors. So I did make sure to get some solids in here. How are you doing, Toby? You know, they're just looking at the back of your head, right? What you doing? 
Nah. <laughs> Chaotic episode, maybe? I don't know. Is this a good video? I don't know. I just really wanted to do this. Hi. Why are you snuggly today? Hmm? What you doing? Okay, go. Not your butt. Nobody wants your butt. <laughs> Don't push it off. Yeah, sorry, bud. Is this a little overwhelming? Maybe. Where to begin? I don't even know. I'm gonna have to make some beginner piles, I think, with just, you know, cursory glance, ones I love that I wanna use for something. <laughs> now that I'm in here, I'm, I'm, so I wasn't overwhelmed, but now I am. What should I do, color? Should I do color? They're already kind of in color. Now this one is a cute little polka dot. It's hard to know for sure if it's vintage or not. I don't know. I think this one could be vintage. I mean, it's probably most of these are, um, if not all, but you never know. I don't know who was hoarding this fabric. So this one though, I definitely am gonna wanna use for something that's gonna be a good secondary fabric. So here we have some cute little heart calico. Look how precious this is. This is so precious. <laughs> so this one is also definitely, this is a precious. That's gonna go with that one. This one, oh my gosh, it's a panel. What are you? Oh, it's a little girl in the window. Don't you chew on strings. That's not safe for you. I do have to say this one, I could see peeking out and the, I had to have this one and I'm, oh, I gotta get up. Can I get up? This is a fabric that I pulled from the attic. This is a fabric that my mom has had since the eighties. So it's like, the exact same color. The flowers are a little different, but it is entirely possible that these were made to go with each other. Like that's just so, so great to me. All right, so this one that I already owned is Peter Pan Fabrics, which is one of the brands that we'll be looking for. There's no selvage on this, so I'm not gonna be able to know if this is also Peter Pan Fabrics, but I might be able to do a Google image search later and see if anybody's got any on eBay. Your ear is probably like right here, isn't it? Um, and then if it is, it'll be a safe bet that this is made to go with the fabric I already have. So we're gonna have to make a separate pile for panels and I don't have any room on the table yet. So we're gonna make a pile there. This one doesn't give me any vintage vibes. I don't care about this at all. So this is gonna go in the least pile. <sighs> this one. This one looks like it could be 70s, partly because yellow is just a big color for the 70s, early 80s. Um, there's a little selvage left, but nothing on it. Now this one, it's really just the colors that make me feel 70s. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of a different style than what a modern small floral print might have, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just vibes, like I said. All right, I'm probably gonna, this is too long. So let's let's cut through and stop narrating and just make piles of favorites. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's so cute. What do I do? The sketchy nature, I think it is still vintage. So we've got some yellow, we've got some larger scale calicos. Oh, this one's got something like interfacing. Nope, masking tape, let's get you off of there. Oh, uh, yeah, friends, don't, don't do masking tape. Masking tape and rubber bands uh, degrade on your goods. So I don't know if that's gonna come out with a wash. It's like 
stiff and everything. So this one we're going to put in a pile to be washed um, with special care to see if I can get that masking tape out. It is a really lovely, slightly larger scale calico, um, but we're going to have to treat that one special. Oh, this is funny. Here's some faux made to look like a tapestry, like a woven tapestry. Ooh, that's a good size. I could do a small pillow or maybe like this, a seat cover, the top of a seat cover. I could do something with that. I don't think I'd want to cut this one up for patchwork. So we're going to put this, we're going to make a pile for solid pieces. Oh, these are hiding in here. Look at this. Look at that, so pretty. <gasps> That's gotta be 70s for sure. It could even be 60s, but I'm gonna stick with 70s. The coloring on that, like color trends is definitely one of the things that you can use to indicate. Yellow gingham, pretty standard basic, almost like a solid. So let's make a pile for solids for now. Am I gonna really spend like two minutes looking at each piece? This is gonna be a long video. That is definitely a 70s color palette. I think this one would be really great for paper piecing. I don't know if I have like enough yellows to go with it, but um, I think it'll look good cut up small. Oh, that's cute. The leaves almost look like paisley. This one's a little newer. This one does have the um, whole bit on the selvage. This is from 1996, not quite vintage. I do go by the 30 year rule. This might be late 80s, early 90s, and there's just such a different vibe. Like they go together, but the vibes are just so different. It just feels different. I don't know, it just, vintage fabric has a different vibe to me. I'm gonna put that one here. I don't care about that one. So this one is a cute, this one probably is 80s. We Oh, we have Concord fabrics, is that what I saw? Yeah, Joan Kessler for, that's gonna be Concord fabrics. Feels like an 80s fabric to me. And then this one is a little piece of flannel that is just like grandma nightgown darling. Since it's flannel, it doesn't really mix with a lot of other stuff. I might have one or two other pieces of flannel. So this is gonna have to wait until I find more flannel to go with it. So that is in the weight pile. I don't have anywhere to make my piles. Go there. Oh, I wanna, I can't. I wanna open every single one and see what they are. have to be on the camera stand. Come here. This way. There we go. Okay. There's another, oh, there's another one of these. Is it the same? It is the same, but I have another one. I could make two matching pillows. That's fun. This one is also Cranston. So a lot of these are Cranston, which is great. Cranston is, I, I need to look into that company. I don't think they're still operating. Here's another Concord. This one is pretty fun, definitely unique. It's vintage, but it's a different style than pretty much anything else here. What would I do with this one? This might be a good paper piecing one. Here we have our first little sample of a watercolor print. There is a distinct watercolor style in the 80s that kind of goes with like the white furniture and the brass and stuff like that. It's all, I don't, I don't know what to call any of these styles. There's not a lot of this though, which is kind of a shame for a larger scale print. So I'm not really sure what I could do with this one that would keep some of this visually intact. We have this nice big bit of pink. This is a little bit stiffer. It's almost like a canvas. Oh, oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> okay, well, um, it's, it's a long piece with something cut right out of the middle of it but uh, it's also a lot stiffer. So this wouldn't go for quilting or patchwork. Um, it could be good for like the back of a cushion or, oh, this would be great for purse lining actually. It'd be nice and sturdy. And um, yeah, I think this would be great to line. If I make a patchwork purse with some of this pink or red, 
or complementary colors. I cannot fold this back up. Okay, you just you just need to get out of here. <laughs> so that one's probably gonna be great for like a purse lining. So this is another Peter Pan fabrics. Oh my gosh, just look at how adorable. That one is definitely precious. So you're just gonna go over there. Here's a, another Concord. This is selvage to selvage. It's folded in half. I'm not gonna unfold it the rest of the way, but yeah. I've got like, what is that, a yard and a half? Nice. I can do something substantial with this. Now this is not a calico, it is a vintage. We're gonna put this in, we're gonna put this in the pile of larger pieces. So I just don't have anywhere to put them. So we got larger pieces. This is another selvage to selvage, uncut, like yard and a half probably. So what I can do is if I do end up with a purple quilt of some kind, like this could be, part of the backing I could do a pieced back with like this one is this one also nice and big I think so don't you fall okay so this one is 1997 whoa not only is it 1997 but it has a website <laughs> now usually if I see a website I figure it's post 2000 but 1997 people I guess they were having websites now this one could have fooled like it kind of did fool me although when you look at it do you see how it's a little bit mottled how there's like darker spots and lighter spots of the purple I think that's a later trend I don't think you'll see that in vintage calicos i think if this was a true vintage 80s fabric it would be a solid color as the base and then you know just the little leafy bits on top Ooh, here's a little tiny piece of purple paisley oh that is cool i don't know if that's vintage or not basically if it's a larger scale thing i'll be looking for projects that will use strips or bigger squares so that I can really let that print shine. And when I'm looking for English paper piecing, you know, we're looking for something that's gonna look good cut up really tiny. So we'll put that here. I am talking my way through this way more than I thought I would. I thought I was just gonna make quick piles, but no, nope, no quick piles for me. Look at that. <gasps> okay, this is 1992. Look at that. We've got some pseudo Memphis going on here. Look at that. You want your 90s surfer? Your late 80s surfer? Your 90s surfer? Here we go. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. I never get fabrics like this. Ha, that's so fun. All right. This is going in my precious uh, yeah, it's not 80s, it's 90s, but it is the flavor of 90s that is an 80s holdover. That early 90s period where they took the 80s Memphis and cranked it up. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air style. <laughs> Ooh, that one's fun. That's really fun. So that battery is about to die because I have been talking way too much. So let's just hurry up and see if I can sort through this pile. We're just, we're going off vibes now. Uh, you're gonna go there. Oh, oh, we have a cut so panel of a calico duck. So this is a VIP Cranston Printworks. Oh, my god everybody's knitting their um emotional support vintage emotional support ducks i'm gonna sew my vintage calico emotional support duck yeah not today though okay we have panels it's so cute what there's more ducks Oh my goodness, someone was digging the ducks. Holy moly. <gasps> we got another one. I got ducks. Oh, I see. Em or ducks. Here we have a whole bunch of reds. That feels kind of 90s. What are you doing here? I haven't sorted through you yet. Nope, I haven't sorted through you yet. 
So these kind of feel 90s to me, but I think they'll be great for Christmas. Ooh, this one's lovely. <gasps> That's really fun. That doesn't feel as 90s, but these definitely feel more 90s and I can't explain why, but I think they'll be great for Christmas. Oh, that one's interesting. You are, again, Joan Kessler. This looks like it bled. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not. That's, that's interesting. I think I'm gonna make a pile of the reds. This is definitely a good Christmassy one. That's also a really large piece. Let's put you with that one. Ooh, another really large. This one's probably 80s. Another Joan Kessler for Concord Fabrics. Another nice large piece. We're gonna go with thickness. I don't have time to unfold it. And then we have some plaids that I think will be great to save for Christmas projects. They look like they're substantial. They are kind of a thinner cotton, but I think those will be great for Christmas. So we're gonna put those all back there. This one's not so Christmassy. I'm not sure what I wanna do with that one. I'm not gonna put that one in the Christmas pile, uh, nor that one, but I'll put it, let's put them both over here. What are you? <gasps> That is so 70s, holy moly. What are you depicting? What is it? It's furniture. <laughs> it's furniture. So you wanna know what a 70s fabric looks like? That's what a 70s fabric looks like. That is funny. <laughs> Last pile, will my battery last? I think this should go in the Christmas pile, yeah? This one looks, I don't know. Joan Kessler for Concord Fabrics. This one feels 90s to me. I'm gonna put this in that pile for now. Was more of this is this the same yeah nice okay this one it does not look very 80s to me nothing on the selvage i don't have a guess for when this is i just don't think it's 80s so it could be 90s i think it could go with some of this other stuff let's put it there for now okay we got some solids solid solid gold so solids, good, good. Solids are good. Okay, great. So we have more of the same. Always nice to have more. Oh, it is just so lovely. I love that. Okay, now we're to the individual pieces. We gotta get through this because my battery's gonna die. So we have some cheater fabric. 70s and 80s for the cheater fabric. I think, I mean, they still do it now, but yeah. This looks like it goes in with the like 80s country kitsch. Um, we do not have any, this is the selvage here. We don't have any information on this selvage, but I'm thinking that this is 80s. And this is not a panel, but it's also not like a thing that you wanna cut up. This is something that you wanna kinda use whole cloth and you might even embellish because it's it's a cheater quilt. It's the patchwork is done. You just pretend that you made something. So this, this would probably be great for purse linings. So where did I put, I don't know where I put my other panel that I was gonna use for purse linings. So we're just making new piles. All right, this one might be for clothing. I didn't open it all the way, but let's have a look. <gasps> Think I can make a Hawaiian shirt? Oh, that's fun. It does have sel something on the selvage. There is no date, but if you look at that font, you might notice it's a little similar to the font that I use on my channel because it is a very distinctly 80s style. So I do think this is probably 80s, but it is a nice flowy something or other. And, um, I'm gonna wanna make a shirt out of that when I learn how to make shirts. So we're gonna put that in its own pile. Oh, I forgot to get the tape. I don't know what this looks like all the way opened up. So we have another panel. Do we have more than one panel? This is Country Sunshine Folk Savings. I don't know. 
but it had a cute cat on it and a calico border. What do we have? What do we have? Come here, come here. What do we have? Oh, there are different ones. Better to feed one cat than 100 mice. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. A stitch in time saves nine. Oh, there's one more. The way to a friend's house is never long. So if there was any doubt that these are from the 80s, besides the style of this calico, I would point you to the background, the grid. I don't know what it is, but when I see grids, I see 80s. Uh, there, there's just something about the window pane grid design that is just so prolific all throughout 80s design. And that is a primary indicator that this is 80s. So we've got panels, more panels. And then this one. I feel like I've seen this as curtains or something somewhere. And oh, ha, we have a date. This is Fifth Avenue Designs. 1986. So this is officially, definitely a 1986 piece of fabric. And this is a good chunk. I don't know what I can do with this, but I can do something with this. It's not one that's going to get cut up small. So, you know, it might be a piece to back for a quilt. It might be pillows, something larger scale. Definitely great for that. So we're going to put this back there somewhere. So much for organizing. Okay, this one is really fun. I haven't opened it all the way, but um, VIP Cranston Printworks Quilter's Album Victorian Vignettes. This is the kind of thing that can be embellished. Like you can put stuff in these frames. This quilt made by was store started in completed in. These are so great. So you could embellish them, embroider them, um, paper piece them, fussy cut them. They're just great little graphics that you can cut apart and use in a larger scale piece. And there's even a label in it. Like this is so fun, so fun. And this is, this is a huge piece of it. Oh, so great. I'm gonna put that with the panels. And then here we have another cheater quilt. Oh, it's in a couple different pieces. So there's like window pane, there's calicos of different scales. There's a few other little designs, some stripes. And I don't know if this is supposed to be white or if it's faded or if it was in a house full of nicotine, but um, that's precious. So this would probably be a great thing to just pad, pad out, quilt, and make it into a pillow or something. Like cheater quilts, that's what they're for. So we're gonna put that in the panels. Okay. This one. Oh, there's two here. I found a little mushroom and some butterflies. And then there's this one, which is a pillow, pillow panel. We got a mess here. Oh, there we go, there we go. So this is a little thin to just turn into a pillow, but that is basically what it's for. Friend fabrics, I'm not familiar with that one. Instructions, brown dots are for candle wicking. French knot. So it is intended to be embellished with further stitching, and then you can turn it into a pillow or whatever your heart's desire. Um, I do feel like it's a little thin, so it would need a backing fabric, but um, that's darling. And then these, same story. They don't have instructions, but they can be embellished. They can be just put in whole hog and just turned into additional patches. So those are just really super fun and I'm really excited about those. And last but not least, this is a huge, huge piece that I didn't like when I first saw it. And the more I looked at it, I fell in love. I think it looks really 80s. There's no indicator, but I think I can do something really fun with that. Okay, so I'm gonna finish uh, tidying up my piles. I need to recharge that camera because you can't see my face now because it just died.
been playing with fabric for far too long now. So the light is fading and my second camera battery has died, but I sat here and just matched up fabrics as well as I could. I mean, this all being theoretically from a single person stash, it makes sense that they already kind of had stuff that went together. So I was just trying to match up and group these fabrics as best as I can to see what kind of projects are already here. For example, uh, we've got these lovely, really bold, um, strong, line art kinds of 70s prints that definitely need to be together. They just, they go together. They're the right color together. They're the right styles. Like they just, they go. And these are super sweet, pale pink and white and really fresh and clean. I think with this watercolor, I think that this is like a pre-made project. I don't know what it is. It probably needs a couple more pieces of something but these shades of pink really don't go with any of these other pinks, but they go really well with each other. I had pulled some of my English paper piecing options. These are four that I already had and tried to find others that go along with. So I've got a big stack here of things that I think are now going to be my English paper piecing um, palette. There are several solids in here. I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna use all of them. And this one, this one's just so saturated and bright. I'm not sure it goes with anything, but I'm gonna put it in there for now. These I think will be great to like fussy cut, you know, have a single hexagon for each butterfly. We have a whole selection of mauve calico there and some yellow with that little bit of orange. They, I don't know what they are, but they feel like they're something. Then we have these brighter yellows and purples, really bold purples, um, and they kind of have similarly bold prints. So, and then the bright yellow and pale purple stripey calicos. Those definitely go together. Again, they might need more of something, but that's a batch of something. And then the funky geometric purples. <laughs> Those are great. That's just, oh my gosh, that's so fun. Now what I really need to do is integrate it into the rest of my stash. I think when I put it away, I'm going to tr keep it in groups like this of things that go together. I also thrifted this lovely sewing basket. I have a lot of sewing baskets and I love to just use them for organization. And so this one, I think I will use for my paper piecing. We've got those in there little tiny uh, scraps there. And then I can keep all of my necessary items there when I get the needles and such. So I think this will be my English paper piecing basket. <laughs> Hi. Why, why are you covering my new fabric in cat hair? Hmm? Oh, and here's, I love, I love when this happens. So we've got this one. These were some of the fabrics that I had pulled aside for possibilities for English paper piecing. And one of them is this fabric that we've had since the eighties I found in my mom's attic and lo and behold, it's the same print, just a different colorway. How great is that? I love finding that. Oh, that's dirty. Here, let me, let me, I'll clean it up. Yeah, here we go. Okay, there. I love that. I love finding multiple colorways of the same print. Like it just, it, it tickles me. I love it. So like these kind of need to be together, even though I had this in my pink pile. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these together. So I didn't finish. Well, I finished sorting through my new fabric but now I kind of need to integrate it into my existing fabric stash. So I'm gonna pull all of my fabric out of the drawer that it's currently in, which is no longer going to be sufficient. Um, I'm gonna shuffle some things around so I can put them into two drawers that are next to each other in a different cupboard. So there it is. I have a little more than I realized. 
isn't that always the case. This does not include my larger pieces, which again are also back here. So these are not going into these piles at this time. I'm not gonna talk about this fabric. I'm just gonna dive in and try and figure out what piles it goes into as quickly as possible. And I will meet back up with you after I've done that. I know I'm doing this a little backwards. I think a lot of times usually you, you know, buy a bunch of fabrics at once that go together. You probably pick the pattern first or, you know, you at least have all your fabrics. I'm kind of going about it as I'm going to collect fabrics and put them into groups. Hi, buddy. Are you gonna mess everything up? You need to go in that laundry basket? Okay. Um, so I'm going to continue to collect fabrics and I'm going to try to buy them with these color schemes and, you know, print styles in mind so that I can build up each of these groups. And then once I get enough to actually make something with, then I can find an appropriate pattern for it and make something. Are you done being destructive? Hmm? Nope. So put this with my solids. Yeah, I got some solid black right here. <laughs> so I have cleared out two drawers for this fabric instead of the one that it used to occupy. I'm gonna go put this away, but I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye now. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed going through my fabric stash with me and having a look at all this lovely vintage fabric from the 70s and 80s and probably a few from the 90s. Don't forget to subscribe if you are at all interested in vintage and vintage inspired crafts and craft adjacent nonsense because that's what this channel is all about. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye!